Well, it all comes down to this. Arsenal, Bayern Munich, the Allianz Arena. One of the biggest games, if not the biggest game of Arsenal's season. With an opportunity of reaching a semi-final in the Champions League for the first time in more than a decade and the chance of getting back on track in the title race with momentum being such a key factor come this stage of the season. Can they do it? We're going to have to wait and see. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Thank you as always for joining me and making this a part of your morning. Routines is incredibly appreciated. I hope you had a fantastic week so far that the start of your week treated you well. But now we are at the business point of this week. Arsenal are in Germany. They have flown, they have travelled and have even been inside the Allianz Arena already as they prepare for this massive opportunity of a game against the former German champions and a side that have so much history in this competition with this club and a chance to finally turn that history around. But it is not going to be easy. It's going to be a massive challenge and Bayern Munich are going to offer plenty of quality and Arsenal have got to respond from a very disappointing defeat at the weekend to Aston Villa. But we're going to be very much excited to watch it and to understand how indeed both teams are going to try to play this out, at least. Uh, good morning to those in the chat box. Good morning to Alex and Darren and Jackie and Jean. Good morning to Carlton, Clitzy, Red Star, Martin, Glenn, Black Shine, Amira, Rowan, Tony. Good morning to you all. Uh, good morning to Stephen and Adian. Good morning, Damien, uh, Matt G, Paul, Carl. Thank you, Bruce, MD. Uh, we've got NSW, we've got uh, Chima, we've got Robert and Vivian and Z and Kish, Maximius, Rob. Thank you. To all of you for tuning in, um, I've mentioned the game yesterday. I did a preview show. I was joined by Damien and Grant for a look back, uh, or rather look ahead um, to the game tonight. So if you have not yet had the opportunity to watch that, please make sure you do. I was worried yesterday for a period that the 1K like challenge was under threat. We did manage to reach 1,000 likes in yesterday morning's video, which is good. But we cannot rest on our laurels. So please make sure that you're liking the video and helping us to reach that 1K every single day like challenge target. It is hugely appreciated that you do that. Um, and I can only encourage you and remind you uh, a couple of times each show. Uh, let's jump into today's stories. We start off with a Champions League roundup. What an evening of quarterfinal action. There's something about this competition that just offers up the most ridiculous scenarios. And despite Barcelona going to the Parc de Plants and coming away with a 3-1, uh, was it 3-1, 3-2? 3-2 victory uh, in France on the night. PSG going to the camp now and coming away with a 4-1 win. Lots of controversy. The red card, of course. Xavi not very happy. Lots of people blaming the referee. Uh, Luis Enrique, a former manager of Barcelona, of course, coming out after saying they would have beaten Barca even if they've had 11 men. Brilliant sporting competitive talk following the game. Um, but an amazing fixture. And that means that PSG progressed to the semifinals. Can Kylian Mbappe still reach that goal with his club. Can he win the Champions League with PSG? We'll have to wait and see. In the other game, Diego Simeone coming unstuck once again in the Champions League to a side which they really shouldn't have. Uh, Borussia Dortmund, of course, are a very good side, but Atleti, after winning that first leg and, and looking so strong, that goal in the end, in the last, uh, toward the end of that first leg game, uh, proving dividends in this one. Borussia Dortmund winning 4-2 on the night. Diego Simeone side conceding four goals uh, in the Signal Duna Park. And a, another brilliant game in particular. I love Nicholas Fulkrug's header. Uh, the cross, the header was absolutely fantastic. And Marcel Sabitzer uh, with a brilliant strike into the bottom right-hand corner. Jaden Sancho looks like a reborn player back in the environment that made him so good. Um, these games are frenetic. They are dramatic and they promote goals. And, you know, the first legs of Manchester City and Man and Arsenal's games, Man City drawing 3-3 in the Bernabeu, Arsenal drawing 2-2 at home, 10 goals across just the two games. And last night, we had 11 goals across two games. Are we going to see another night of high scoring action this Champions League football it dictates high-intensity games. It dictates high-scoring games. Arsenal 
don't tend to be the side that like high scoring on both sides. Either they score a lot of goals or they try and, you know, frustrate like we saw at Manchester City, like we've seen against other teams this season. What will the game tonight play out like? We're going to have to wait and see, but it's exciting and I cannot wait for it. Declan Rice has been named the PFA Player of the Month, um, which is a fantastic contribution and, and recommend um, uh, accomplishment for Arsenal's midfielder. Brilliant month of uh, of March that it was for Declan Rice, scoring goals, massive performances and deservedly picking up the award. This month, we want to see more of a response. I think he faded in the game against Villa. We're going to need him tonight in the game against Bayern Munich, probably alongside, I hope, at least Thomas Partey. That's who I'd like to see start with Declan Rice in this game. But it'll be up to Mikel Arteta and he'll know best who is fit and available to play and start this game. Into the transfer market briefly before we return to the Champions League. Uh, Arsenal, according to the Daily Express, is said to be drawing up a list of players that they will offer to Sporting in a potential player plus cash deal for Victor Goyokares. Um, Yokares, is, of course, the Swedish striker that has scored and contributed more goals than any other over the course of this season so far. Um, and apparently the standout striker candidate that Arsenal might indeed look to move for in the summer. But to bring that price down... There's suggestions from the Daily Express that Arsenal might look to offer some players in the opposite direction. Who could they be? Well, we look at players like Nuno Tavares. We look at Kieran Tierney. We look at Sambi Lekonga, Eddie Nketiah, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith-Rowe. Who knows? Alexander Sinchenko. Who knows? Aaron Ramsdale. We don't know which players are going to be leaving in the summer. There are some ideas. Fabio Vieira, Ranson suggests as well, maybe another. But that £85 million release clause, that €100 million Euro release clause that is in Jokerez's deal. Um, Arsenal may look to try and bring that price down, according to Daily Express, by making some changes um, with the squad and, and offering up some potential players in any potential swap deal. Intrigued, uh, indeed. Thomas Tuchel, returning to the Champions League, did face the press yesterday speaking to and in his press conference. He says, I have the feeling that our supporters are aware of the quality Arsenal has shown in recent years. It's not the same Arsenal that they previously beat comfortably. So everyone is very well aware about the difficulty of the task. But the expectation is always there at Bayern Munich. And of course, I think we've come to expect that Bayern Munich in this competition have the experience that Arsenal don't have, you know, in, in the same way. Um, but he was asked about a number of other topics as well, including the latest team news. He said, Manuel Neuer and Leroy Sané can play. I'm leaning towards putting Alex Pavlovich in the squad and we're still looking at the left-back position. We'll make the final decisions tonight. Uh, there was some, um, I think I saw some tweets suggesting that Bayern Munich were training with Guerrero playing slightly ahead um, of, uh, who was it who was playing at the left, the left side? Of, I'll try and find it for you, but... There were some uh, tweets going out yesterday of people trying to watch the open training session. I, I don't think it's too keen. Here we go. Um, it says there were some surprises in Bayern, Bayern's final training session today. Thomas Muller was in the B team. Both Nusser Masrawi is who it was and Rafa Guerrero played together in the A team. Therefore, it's conceivable that Masrawi would start at left back with Guerrero starting on the left wing to support the Mor Moroccan defensively. Jamal Musiala would then start in the 10. So despite predictions that um, it might be Thomas Muller, Musiala, Leroy Sané and Kane as the front four, it might instead be kind of a strange um, concoction of Guerrero and Mazraoui on the Bayern left-hand side. Of course, both of them uh, will be tasked with trying to shut down both Saka and Odegaard. Uh, they know that they need to be able to do that as effectively as possible. Arsenal's left-hand side, not as potent as Arsenal's right-hand side. How Mikel Arteta will deal with that will be interesting. But if that is indeed true, intriguing, I don't know if that's the case, though, because, of course, they try and throw up mind games. They try and try different things in training. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, Odegaard, of course, was the main concern for Arsenal squad-wise going into the game, but I was at the Sober Realty Training Centre yesterday and Odegaard was the first man out, as expected, after Yuri and Timber, who's doing some ball work with the coaches before joining in with the session himself. He's still uh, some way away, it seemed like. It could be even a couple of weeks for Jury and Timber still as well before he even plays a youth game. So uh, that is still trundling on. Is it going to be May? We eventually see Jury and Timber back if Arsenal make it to a Champions League semi-final, if they make it to a Champions League final. Is that when we might see Jury and Timber? Uh, they're being very, very cautious with him. They do not want to rush him back at all. And I don't blame them. I really don't. What's the point in rushing back a player? that you could end up ruining further, you know, given the best opportunity to be as strong as feasibly possible when he does make that 
return. But Odegaard um, did train and has travelled with the rest of the squad. Everyone is available bar Timber um, that Mikel Arteta can, of course, choose from. So really positive stuff from a squad side of things. And Mikel Arteta did indeed face the press. Yesterday, uh, from the Alliance Arena, was asked a number of things about kind of what he wants to see from his players. He says, a performance that puts us in the Champions League semi-final is what I want to see. All the preparation have been to achieve that and earn it, and we have been ready for 10 months and everything we did last season to start that journey in the Champions League after so many years. And tomorrow, we have an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. The mood in the dressing room is that we've thrown away the game um, the weekend, the one we played a few days ago, because regardless of that result, it'll have no impact on what's going to happen against Bayern. We'll refocus and start to build the confidence, trust and understanding for the performance that we have to put in tomorrow to beat them and be through the tie. He was asked about what it instruct the players in terms of the emotion and he says emotions are needed in football. It's about tweaking it and touching it the right buttons uh, at the right time for the team to always be stable and be hyped when it has to be hyped. I think we did that really well in London because after scoring the first goal in the game, we had a big chance to score the second one and then the five to ten minutes they are ahead and we're in control. Uh, we were mature not to throw everything away in that moment, found our rhythm and our moment to score a really good goal. And the reaction of the team was straight away to score the third one, which you could argue Arsenal should have done, either by winning a penalty or Saka, maybe skipping over Manuel Neuer. But less said about that, the better. Um, he was asked about how he alleviates the pressure from his players. And he said, most of our players haven't experienced a night like this, and it'll be their first one. They'll be super motivated and they are prepared and confident. And that's something that tomorrow we have to show against an opponent that has the experience but we've got to make it happen. He was asked about that recent record we've got in Munich, and he says, we have to change it, and the opportunity comes here. It's a lot of things that we can do to write the story very differently tomorrow, and it's going to be about putting in a very, very strong performance, collectively and individually, to earn the right to be in the semi-final. I'm really hopeful that Arsenal can put in the performance that we all want to see and that we all need to see tonight because it is going to require Arsenal's best performance of the season to come through this game, to come through as semi-finalists up against either Manchester City or Real Madrid. That's the reward for getting through. It gets no easier, um, but it puts Arsenal in a semi-final for the first time in well over a decade and a real opportunity for Arsenal to, you know, I think get back in, in, in the driver's seat of their own season in some regards and to get that momentum back as well. Uh, there's a new competition to tell you about. I spoke about Martin Odegaard just a second ago and you can win a signed and framed Martin Odegaard shirt, um, which I recommend that you do. So you go down to the link in the description, uh, join the, uh, the the competition. There is not long on this one. It's only a couple of days, which now is reduced to just over a day. And there's only 76 tickets left of this one. So best of luck if you'd like to get in with it. There's lots of other shirts, of course, in this competition. But as Arsenal fans, I would assume that it's the Odegaard one that you would like to get your hands on. So best of luck to those those that are getting involved with this one. Right, let's go to part two and your questions right after this. Okay, let's jump into the chat box, shall we? And uh, we'll go into, let's see first, um, what? comments we've got coming up um luke says my insider tells me that Erdogan is injured and will not play today he's over there only to deceive tuchel luke he trained yesterday so don't uh you're not you're not planting any seeds as well uh pedro says how many red members are not renewing this year it seems to be a groundswell of resistance at the moment i'm very curious actually to help on this i might put a poll uh into the chat box just to get your thoughts please only vote of course if you are uh, a red member but I, it is certainly something I'm intrigued by um, it's kind of this um, social side of things about whether red members will choose to uh, to renew so if you are a red member will you be renewing at the end of the season or whenever it needs to be uh, yes or no there's your poll um because i'm curious pedro thank you for asking the question i saw a tweet yesterday that i disagreed with i have to be unsurprised me disagreeing with something that's certainly new um but it was a tweet a, it was kind of a big thread talking about the um talking about the ticket situation um this was from tesh tesh tweeted at mitesh 80991373 sounds like a bot doesn't it i don't think they are um but tesh says uh, just got the email telling me that my silver membership is up for renewal for 54 pounds after only being successful uh, after only one successful ballot application this season is it really worth me renewing 
my fantastic support, which you are thanking me for, has come from behind a television screen, um, which I can understand his frustration. Uh, this was responded to by uh, Jamie Kay uh, on Twitter, uh, who is a very well-followed uh, Arsenal fan, um, who says, I used to be a Red member and obtained tickets, no problem. What's the what's this ballot business? Has it changed? And Tess replied saying, Silver and Red members now need to apply to be in the ballot so they can pull a load of names out of a hat to see if you get the ticket for a game. A ridiculous system, as I've had one success all season, and that was the Bayern game. Um, I tweeted saying, how would you guys change the system? I've not had a reply yet. It was, you know, they did, the tweet was from 12 hours ago and I've only just replied this morning. So I'll, I'll catch up with you tomorrow if there is indeed a reply, maybe in the show if I remember. But uh, the ticket system is certainly um, flawed. There is no doubt in my mind the ballot system needs to be improved. However, um, the ballot system remains the fairest way for fans that want to go to games to get tickets. The old system, which for those that aren't aware, was basically you hop onto the website at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe even earlier because the queue used to be so long, especially last season and the season before, um, that so you'd be waiting for hours, you know, in a midweek day at 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning to get into the queue to then pick your seats and buy your seats. And a lot of fans were very successful because they were willing to, you know, wait for several hours on a midweek uh, morning. Now, for people that work nine fives in jobs where they can't sit on their phone or sit on a laptop at that time so teachers nhs staff um there's lots of other jobs of course but just picking a couple out of the hat uh, ironic uh, analogy there um but uh, for those people they could not access the ballot they couldn't sorry they could not access the queue because they were working they weren't able to buy the tickets they couldn't sit in the queue so the uh the the system is ultimately flawed um, and the system is in a situation where a, a ballot is never going to be as successful as the previous system was for some people. That said, those that have got more tickets during the ballot system but didn't get them during the old system haven't said anything because why would you? You're getting more success. You are getting more, um, you're getting more tickets than you were because before you couldn't even access the queue. So there's a very loud, frustrated uh, portion of people that are getting less tickets this season because the ballot has meant that they aren't able to get the tickets as successfully. And there's a quiet portion of people that aren't saying anything because they are getting tickets more so than they were in previous seasons because they weren't able to actually get tickets in the previous system. Um, Sun Litlos says, I went to my first game this year. Um, so there's, you know, there is a there's two sides to this coin. The third element of this whole ballot stuff, which we've done phone-ins about, is the argument that the ballot system has affected the atmosphere in the stadium. Now, from my perspective, I don't buy that at all. I don't think it's, there's any weight whatsoever in that argument. There's a number of reasons why I don't think there's any weight in that argument. A, there's more than 40,000 season ticket holders in that ground, for starters. B, the suggestion that supposed tourist fans that are getting more tickets are having an effect on the atmosphere, which has a certain undertone of xenophobia to it. But that that argument is also flawed because, if anything, tourists from abroad actually find it harder to get tickets through the ballot system. Because if you're, and I don't, I don't like the word tourist, but just for the element of the word, if you are traveling from abroad to a game and you've you know planned a trip, you're an Arsenal fan from uh, America or Canada or Asia or Africa or anywhere around the world, if you want to go to a game and you're a fan from abroad, you have to get incredibly lucky in the ballot. And then you have to plan your trip. Otherwise, you're planning your trip and then hoping to get lucky in the ballot. So the ballot actually makes it much, much more tricky for fans from abroad to get tickets, who will certainly continue to call fans from abroad rather than tourist fans, because it's just a stupid label that, frankly, xenophobes use. Um, but in regards to the ballot system, it is definitely flawed. There are definite problems in the ballot system, one being... It's not necessarily, I think, as fair that someone can enter a ballot and get lucky five times and someone can enter the ballot, you know, the same number of times and get, you know, no tickets. There should definitely be, from my perspective, at least a call down. If you're successful in a ballot, it means you can't enter the, the next two or three, you know, so that it gives the people that weren't successful in the ballot more of an opportunity to get one as well. I think that if you're a red and a silver member, if you enter the ballot and you're both successful, it should, if you if you can apply together, you should be able to have red and silver members sitting together if they would like to. 
um, only if, of course, both memberships or two or more are successful. That needs to be something that's looked at. Ticket touting is still a massive problem, despite you've still got losers in my comment section suggesting there is a snitch culture. Ticket touting is an incredibly really awful problem that exists within the, the footballing space, not just Arsenal, but elsewhere. And it's actually the biggest reason why the ballot system has been introduced. The ballot system has been introduced to try and help curb ticket touting um, and to tackle it as well. And obviously technology has been implemented to try and curb the number of bots that are being used to snap up the tickets that were being put up onto the market on the previous system. So it's it's definitely something that's designed to stop that. So if you want to blame anyone, really, for the ballot system, if you're very angry about the ballot system being introduced, point your fingers towards the ticket touts and the people that are creating these bots that snap up tickets um, rather than that. Uh, CJ Dan says the bots are even worse now. I, I don't know how that would be the case, Dan. I'd love for you to give me an explanation of how the bots are worse now because obviously the club have banned, got rid of memberships of hundreds of thousands of bot accounts. And obviously we're in a ballot system now. So either you're successful or you're not. So I don't necessarily get how the bot systems would be worse, but I'm open to you explaining to me how in detail. Uh, just a quick note on that um, that poll. If you are a red member, will you be renewing at the end of the season? So far, 60% have said yes, which is quite a large uh, major uh, sorry, a large minority of 40% are still saying no. Uh, in our poll at the moment. So very, very interesting indeed. Um, and so looking at that, it is, it's going to be intriguing to see how many red memberships are bought up for next season. Uh, Chanit says, uh, I'm waiting for the red ballot result for Bournemouth. And if I succeed, it will be my first game at the Emirates. Spot on about the planning issues international fans like me have. This system needs tweaking. Uh, it's It's absolutely true. I don't know if it's a case of like, the ballot system needs to be done much further in advance so that international fans have a better chance. But there is an irony, isn't there, that you've got kind of the, the, the people that are accusing fans from abroad of making this ballot system worse, despite the fact that actually the ballot system makes it harder for fans from abroad to get their hands on on tickets. Uh, Olu says, cancelled mine at the start of the season as I was unsuccessful last year. Um, Benny says, the system is definitely flawed, but if you have a spare 24 hours to spam refresh the ticket exchange, you should definitely find a bit of luck there. Of course, I should always recommend that if you enter the ballot and you are unsuccessful, it does give you the option to be able to then use the ticket exchange to try and find a ticket. So it's worth always entering the ballot so you can then try and get one on the ticket exchange. Uh, JD says, I struggled for years to get tickets. With the ballot, I was able to go and see my first Arsenal game at the Emirates ever, and it was against Liverpool. Well, I bet that was, I mean, hopefully it was the league game rather than the FA Cup game. Um, Benny says, hi, Tom, an avid Spotify listener, top 0.5%, not to brag or anything, uh, flying solo for the first time today, and unfortunately missed the majority of the game. I'm going to be gutted to, to miss that. Benny, thank you, first of all, for your listenership. It's very much appreciated, and I'm sorry that you're, you're missing out on it. Uh, Dan says, I can't lie, I don't like the ballot. Charging someone £35 for the chance to buy a ticket for one game all season seems very unfair. Uh, they should refund your money if below three games. I think I don't think that's a bad suggestion at all from Dan. You know, I absolutely empathise with that point of view. You're being charged for membership. If that membership is unsuccessful at the course of the season, should you be refunded part of that? I think it's, there's, there's a very definite argument. I empathise with that view. I don't think that's a bad suggestion whatsoever. I'm curious to get Dan's thoughts about the bots, though, but you've not replied yet, Dan, so I'll, I'll await that response. Uh, a couple of uh, super chats. Uh, I was going to get there, Clark, um, but thank you for both of them. Um, it was just because we were on the ticket topic at the moment. Uh, Clark says, hi, Tom. Hello, Clark. Uh, what do you think about the clear increase in diving within the squad? I've seen it from Jesus and Havertz often, but then Saka Martinelli and potentially even White. I can't remember White's dive. Um... Is it Arsenal being a bit street smart, you know? Um, is it Arsenal trying to just play the game? I don't like it when no one likes diving, but let's not pretend that no one else does it, you know? Uh, we just need to be, you know, I think if, if you're going to try and buy contact, of course, like I arguably think Saka tried to do in the buying game, um, if, you've got to be smarter with it, like really. But ideally, we'd just win the penalties when that we win them. I'd rather the players stayed on their feet and tried to score than gamble on a, a potential dive. It's it's not, you know, it's not uh, it's not ideal. Uh, Alvin Mod says getting tickets through membership is impossible. Uh, from abroad, you can only get tickets through agencies, and then they're extremely expensive. Of course, you can go through. Uh, sometimes supporter groups like Arsenal America, etc., um, and groups like that can help get them. But yeah, they can be very, very expensive indeed. Um, 
let's go. And Archangel says it's needless to say that we don't leave early. I'm assuming perhaps um, Archangel is, is speaking from a fan that's 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 come from abroad. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I imagine that the argument there is that fans, you know, have made the journey, made the trip. You know, you're not going to be leaving if we go one nil down against Aston Villa in the 84th minute. You know, you're going to be staying to the very very end. And that's the the other point that comes up is the loyalty argument. There's suggestions that loyalty should come into the factoring of whether a member should be more able to get a ticket than another. I don't agree with this argument because I don't know why the luck of birth, whether you're, you know, whether you were born a longer period of time ago, so you've been a member for longer, whether you were born in the local area, you know, I don't think the luck of birth should prefer should give you preferential treatment to a ticket over somebody else if someone's just turned the age in which you can now buy a ticket why should they be punished for being born later than somebody else that was able to buy tickets 20 10 20 30 years ago you know i don't believe that that's fair so the ballot system is indiscriminate and i think that is the best way to try and get tickets to arsenal fans anyone going to the game Absolutely, it's it's a case of being an Arsenal fan. I don't want to see fans from other teams at grounds. And sadly, some of our own season ticket holders were open to selling their tickets to Bayern Munich supporters during the game against Bayern last week, to which some Arsenal fans even tried to defend those season ticket holders, which I cannot get my head around. Um, and the club plans to indefinitely suspend those memberships once they find out the people that were, uh, of course, selling those tickets to Bayern fans, which should be a process that will be ongoing at the moment um because they did manage to eject uh, just under 10 by Munich fans in the home game last week so yeah that's one to, to look at uh martin says interesting thought it isn't it inherently unfair that the side at home in the second leg get an extra 30 minutes at their stadium to get a result in a draw um arguably martin you're right but i guess that's like if you think about kind of fa cups and league cup draws is it inherently unfair that there might be a team that only gets drawn away fixtures all the way through that their their draw? It's kind of the luck of the draw, isn't it? You know, and uh, I absolutely understand where you're coming from, but uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we've now scrapped the away goals rule because a team that was playing extra time in their own ground had the advantage of, sorry, had the disadvantage of not being able to score an away goal. So I think that's why another reason why we've got rid of away goals and, and definitely for the better. Uh, Pear says, I'm from Norway and I've been an Arsenal fan for over 30 years. I've only been to about a dozen games, but I've sung my heart and voice out every single one of them to the final whistle every single time. Um, Damon says, that is indeed why it's called the luck of the draw indeed. But going back to Pear's comment, I'll never, I mean, I say I'll never understand. In, in part, I will never understand the the xenophobia that does exist towards fans from abroad. I don't know if it's just an insecurity from some fans that sadly can't deal or hack the fact that there are other supporters of the club. You know, you want your club to be successful. You want the club to be the one of the biggest in the world, one of the most successful in the world. And what that comes with is a great, is a greater and bigger profile, is a greater chance that fans from abroad will be inspired to want to support this club. And this club needs global support. It needs that to be able to compete at the highest level. You can't have everything your own way, you know. Um, and there is definitely some contradictions and um, there's definitely, yeah, some hypocrisies that go on for some fans' positions. Um, let's scroll up and see if I've missed any other comments. This is quite a good topic, actually, to talk about um, today. Uh, Benny says, are cash out windows still a thing? I sold a club level ticket on the exchange recently and the funds sit in my balance. Do I have to wait until the end of the season? Red members, no real point of a balance for, on that side of things. I'm not 100% sure, Benny. I think that's maybe one to take up to, to chase the club up with. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. and I'm not an expert in the field. I can only give my opinion and the knowledge that I've got of a restricted sense, but uh, I'm not 100% sure, Benny. It's one to chase up the club with, I think. Uh, Morgie says, Tom, Charles Watts reckons Timber will not play until next season, and I agree with him. Even if fit, uh, it would be risky to play him for the first time in a competitive match at this stage of the season. Um, hopefully, he could be vital in the last two to three games. If he's available and fit and ready, he can play. You know, But I absolutely empathise with that point of view, and I think Charles raises a fair point. If he's not that, and we're going to end up rushing him back, just save him for next season. It is no point in, in rushing him in. Um, let's go to... Rand says, Tom, uh, would you take this situation? We're 1-0 down after 45 minutes, but Bayern are one man less for the remainder of the game. Maybe? That's almost an impossible question. Yeah, if you're going to go down to 10 men, Arsenal would arguably have the incentive and you know, have been pretty good at actually breaking down low blocks and 
maybe that would be the case. Um, Fouad says Twitter or X has been a horrendous app since it was recently taken by taken over by Elon Musk. My goodness, it's the Wild West on there. They need to clean it up. Oh, they absolutely do. Like the amount of um, the amount, what's the word? Like bots and horrific, horrible content you see on the bottom of every tweet. Like you know, I've got a, two Twitter accounts, of course, my personal one and my TGT one with a relatively sizable following. And so anything I put out on Twitter, it just gets filled with either betting replies or some pretty, you know, distasteful stuff underneath as well. It's just a sad reality. And the irony was is that apparently when Musk took over X, it was going to be a case of it was going to be cleaned up and these bot accounts would be a thing of the past, but they're they're certainly not. Um Ben says the club have payment days of when they pay that money back. So there you go, Benny. Hopefully that gives you uh, – Ben's giving Benny some advice and hopefully that will see um, an answer to your question. Um, Lee says, Tom, I love this club to bits, but I fear for tonight. I don't know if we'll have the legs to get us through. It's, that question keeps coming up, doesn't it? Are we fit enough? You know, are we um, Are we going to be able to have the the fitness, the stamina to continue? And it's definitely an experience this season that we are – having for the first time, having a title race and a Champions League at the same time. That's why I have sympathy at times for when things are tougher towards the end of the season. Like Man City have done this year on year on year on year. And we're going up against not only that, but we're going up against Bayern Munich in the Champions League latter stages every single year. And we're getting back to this level. And, you know, some people don't have that same sympathy. They're entitled to, to not have that. But uh, at the same time, I, I do. And I put it into perspective. And I have that context of understanding where we are as a club right now. And, it's not just about the badge and we are Arsenal and raise your, your standards and all that rubbish. But like, you know, it's, it's actually about understanding where we are as a club right now and we're up against it. You know, we are backs against the wall and uh, experiencing this for the first time. And uh, the summer is going to be really important to continue strengthening and improving the quality that, you know, the squad has throughout it. We don't need to be going into games where the lineup should be obvious. We should be going into games where we're having discussions about loads of positions, about how we can rotate more effectively, about how we can afford to rotate, about how we could drop Saliba or Gabriel and say a Diamande comes in, then we're not going to be fearful of playing Diamande. You know, if we were to drop Saliba or Gabriel, it's panic stations for us. There isn't a world conceivably where we can drop either, any of not just Gabriel and Saliba, but there's no world in which I think we can afford to drop Ben White at the moment. There's no world in which we can drop Saka, no world in which we can drop Erdegaard, no world in which we can drop Rice. You know, there's no world in which these players can actually be taken out of the starting lineup from game to game to game at such an important point in the season. And that's what we need to ultimately find in the summer is the ability to be able to change players more regularly, to bring players off earlier in games. And Arteta himself needs to take some ownership for the lack of substitution awareness, you know, and game management. You know, that needs to be still improved on his part as well. Um, uh, Robert says, just discovered your channel, Tom, and I'm really enjoying it. Great stuff. Thanks, mate. That's very kind of you indeed. Um, and welcome to the, uh, the TGT family. I think, in fact, we had a couple of new members, actually. Paul, uh, Paul who's been a member now for two months. Thank you, Paul, uh, for supporting the channel. And uh, and Mouse Drink uh, has joined up as well. Thank you and welcome to the TGT crew. Um, Abby says, I played two games today uh, on FIFA 14 between Bayern and Arsenal. I won both in the dying moments. Winners from Wilshire and Podolski. Long story, Arsenal is winning. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, and I hope that that is a, a good omen for tonight's game. Um, but yeah, the only good games to play on FIFA are the ones from like 10 years ago these days. Uh, John says, whatever Mikel Arteta does, this game looks to be the biggest test of his ability to form a winning selection and manage the game in our favour since he's signed for us. Certainly, I think one of the biggest challenges we've we've ever faced uh, very hard. Uh, Lloyd says the local fans that complain about overseas fans seem to ignore that the majority of the money their foreign owned club makes um, to buy most of the time foreign players and coaches also is there to help the club. And it's, it's very true. There's, as I've mentioned, there's a huge irony, a big hypocrisy, and there's plenty of contradictions going on. You know, the, the xenophobia that, that is the foundation of sadly so many supporters' views on fans from abroad and that they're happy for, you know, Arsenal's team to be fulfilled with the majority of players from abroad, but suggest that the Emirates is filled with the majority of fans from abroad. And it's a very, very different story. Um, and there is that obvious irony there. Um, uh, Manila says, why are so many fans pining for Partey to start? Um, is it a case of nostalgia of his form from the first half of last season when in reality he's been fairly average? He looked rusty and can't be trusted. I think that's harsh. I think that Partey's come in and, and had some good displays actually since uh, rejoining the squad. 
When he came on against Manchester City, there were some really good passes. When he came on against Bayern, he played that pass to Bukaya Saka, which could have led to us getting a penalty or a goal at the end of the last leg. When he started against Luton, he looked decent in that game. So I think that's a little bit harsh, actually, on, on Partey's performances. Uh, Van Duty says, maybe worth a future uh, poll or phone-in. Would Gunners be willing to move to a new stadium outside of the borough, i.e. like Twickenham or Wembley, if it guaranteed another 30,000 seats? Now, I don't think that's... I think that's slightly different. You know, I... I talk a lot to, to West Ham supporters because I've got West Ham supporters in my family. And whilst they're, you know, moving away from the bowling ground, they, they're frustrated that happens. You know, the London Stadium is a bit of a shell. It's it's not actually West Ham, it's Stratford, you know. So it, I, I think that's different. You know, there's something about the identity of a club based upon where it's situated. Um, but of course, Arsenal have moved. In our history, we've moved. You know, we started in South in, in Woolwich Arsenal and we've moved to North London. So is there... Is there an argument that, you know, Arsenal could move again, you know, and we would still support it? I suppose that in itself is an irony. Local fans saying, oh, I'm a local supporter, you know, I deserve that loyalty. Well, actually, you're not from South London where the club originally began necessarily. So <laughs> I suppose there's an irony in that fact as well. But it's, it's, an, imp it's an interesting question, especially considering the club's own history. Um Let's go to um, b -b 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 Kyle says, may the gods of PSG last night fund us today. <laughs> Indeed, we could do with that. Gazang says, do you think Podolski and Jokeres have similarities in their playing style? Um, that's a hell of a question, trying to compare players from those different types of eras. I mean, Jokeres is, I think Jokeres is a little bit more collaborative than Podolski was. Podolski was one of those players where you could never really nail down what his best position was. I wouldn't even describe him as a, as a striker, I always felt like he had to play off somebody else um, rather than playing as a sole number nine. I know when he came into the club and Giroud wasn't necessarily cutting the mustard at the start, we started to play Podolski as that lone striker. But I'm not sure whether I, I felt like Jokerez is much more of a you know established sole centre forward, whereas I think Podolski needed support um, more than him. I think the shot, obviously, is what you're talking about, maybe more so the, the power that Podolski can put into a strike, but there's very few players other than Hulk, uh, of course, not the Marvel character, the actual Brazilian footballer Hulk that could put a uh, <laughs> his foot for a ball quite like nobody else. Um, Lee says, what's your thoughts on Chelsea apparently selling two hotels, which helped them stay within financial sustainability re regulations? I'm not a financial expert, Lee, but it certainly raised my eyebrows and I'd from what I read, I just don't get how that can. I don't get how that can be <laughs> like the way around it. I really don't get it. Um, Nick says, Tom, have you recently played Fallout 76? Uh, it's uh, had a lot of updates and it's pretty good now. It's also free on Game Pass and Prime. I have. I, I played it at the start. I played it more recently. I There's things about it I don't like. Um, the VAT system in Fallout 4 is is my way forward. Because it's an online game, you can't have that. So I know I'm going off on a Fallout tangent, but I've talked about Fallout on the channel before. I imagine it's going to get a lot of influx of new players, to be fair. If you want to play a Fallout game and you want to play more on an up-to-date game, please play Fallout 4 um, if you want to immerse yourself in the, the Fallout universe. Um, Z says, prediction time, Tom. Um, can we go through? We can, Of course we can go through. I went with a 2-1 in the previous show. If you want to get the thoughts of my fantastic guest from yesterday, please go back and check out my... Um, uh, go and check out my preview show with with Grant and Damien. Definitely worth your time. Uh, I went with 2-1, though. Um, Matt says, I rate Jokerez, but I don't like his goal celebration if he joins Arsenal. He has to change. What, why don't you like it, Matt? Is there... I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, why? Why? Why don't you like Jokerez's celebration? I'm curious now. I was going to do it, but now I'm conscious that there may be another, another meaning to it that I'm not aware of. So I'm curious as to, for you to tell me. But I'm curious as to what the actual meaning behind him saying it is. I don't know if he's explained it. Uh, Jokerez celebration explained. Let's have a look. Uh, he says, uh, I think the celebration is because of the character in the film Hannibal Lecter. He eats people and Victor destroys defences. <laughs> oh, Okay. I see. It's a Hannibal Lecter reference. Interesting. Um, okay, a little strange. I don't, I don't think it was. I didn't think it would be that kind of dark. Um, but maybe you've got a reason behind it, Matt, um, for not liking. It. <laughs> I yeah, it's it's all it's all tongue in cheek at the end of the day. So, uh, but yeah, I didn't realise it was that dark. I didn't know. It's the way he explains it as well. He eats people and Victor destroys defences. Oh, sorry, his teammate Josh Eccles said in March 2023, that was what it was. 
Um, so there you go. It wasn't Victor that said that line, but uh, yeah, <laughs> very disturbing that. Um, Nick says, after how the Emirates crippled us, no way. We've only just recovered. Um, I assume that's in relation to the, the Villa game. We need to respond. We've been good at responding this season. You know, we've only like had one poor patch, which is, of course was during that festive period. Whenever we else, we've dropped points. You know, we've responded pretty well, um, all things considered. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think we've got to worry about it. Um, Matt G says, it's nothing really to do with Hannibal Lecter. I just wanted to do a backflip or something. <laughs> I love that. Um, Chino says, all I hope for from tonight is that we can go through without penalties. My heart nearly broke down in the last 16 against Porto. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're absolutely right. A, a quick check on that poll I put up earlier on about if you are indeed a red member, will be will you be renewing at the end of the season? 63% uh, saying yes. So actually more people saying yes now compared to the 37% that say no. Um, so there you go. Um, I, I think it's, it's still 37% is still a significant portion of people. If that's a small sample size of the bigger reality of how many people will actually renew their seasons. But it's also it's one thing voting in a poll. It's another thing doing it. You know, it's easy to say it now, but actually to not renew your, your membership um, may be different. Also, I'm not sure if you keep your season ticket waiting list if you cancel your membership. Do you keep that? If you cancel the membership, or do you have to keep paying to stay on the waiting list? I mean, that in itself is a big, big question mark as, uh, as well. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we're getting the show there. Uh, thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting. Uh, it's incredibly appreciated. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy yourselves. Um, I know it will be very much predicated upon the fact of what happens tonight, but at least up until the game. You can enjoy yourselves. If you are unable to watch the match for whatever reason, you want to stay updated, I'll be doing the minute-by-minute -minute live blog on the London website. Our colleague Kai Kainak is in the Allianz Arena tonight helping us with the updates too. Um, and then I'll be back tomorrow morning for a breakdown, raw reaction analysis of tonight's game as well. So you'll be able to tune in for that. If you've not yet dropped a like on the video, please do. Uh, trying to help us to get to 1K every single day. Uh, so please do help us by pressing that like button if you haven't done so. Uh, it takes you a second and it really does help us out. But uh, yes, yeah, stay safe, stay well, stay happy and respectful. Let's keep those fingers very much crossed. In fact, let's get everything crossed um, for tonight and hope that we can come away with a historic, famous and very important win. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>